more important the workers or the technology the second one is should a company adopt technology to fit their people and processes or change the people and processes to fit the technology what do you think nice mm. I'm not worried about the people or the, I'm, I'm worried away about my technology and the stakeholders and shareholders that I have to talk to. So I'm not so much worried. I worry about the people to an extent that we take care of them. I'm not worried about um, that picture past that because, and we've said this on many shows, you have to worry about the people you're displacing. So if we displace somebody, we make sure we worry about them. But as I grow a company with AI, I'm not worried about who I'm displacing. I'm just worried about how I take care of them. I, I think you got to think about the, the symbiosis between the technology and the people. I mean, to, in terms of the second point of your question around whether you adapt the technology to the people or the people to the technology right. or the, and the processes, I think it's, I think the best, the best route is going to, the best way forward is actually combining what makes us human with the technologies as they develop, because as they develop, it can emphasize what it means to be human in terms of our creativity, in terms of our brainstorming, in terms of our empathy. And uh, until we're completely replaced by robots, I think you it's the right way forward to think about the people as it relates to the technology and consider them both at the same time. And you know what? Before we go on to the next thing, hold on one second. Now let's officially start the show. This is 2OF Entertainment. Welcome to the Lost Dollar Business Club, where we talk about business, 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 and not just business. We talk about what makes businesses go up and what makes businesses go down. If you're interested in businesses, this is where it is. We talk about the global economy. We talk about global politics. We talk about everything and anything business related that affects your life on a global scale as well as a local scale. And don't miss after the show, Lost and Found. Well, now we're officially starting. Um, we should welcome our guest, Michael Collins. Michael, thank you for being here. Author of the, uh, author of Dismantling the American Dream: How Multinational Corporations Undermine American Prosperity, and you wrote a great book talking about how these multinationals, in particular, chose to favor their shareholders over all stakeholders and short-term profits over society and country. Which you say they, they're still doing it. They're and still, now AI over They're the still doing it. And AI is going to give them another big boost. But, you know, back to the question of which is more important, the workers, the people, or the technology. Back many years ago when Toyota came in and the Toyota production system was a big, was all the rage, Toyota said, the, the chairman said, we build people before we build cars. We believe our success begins and ends with our people. We want a system that adapts to the way we work, not to have to adapt to the way an existing piece of software works. I don't know whether Toyota still believes that, but that was their <laughs> that was their mantra twenty mm -hmm. years ago. What do you think? It, I think twenty years ago they had the robots, so they they adapted the pe the robots to help produce more cars to help their team. I think with AI coming down the pike, AI is making it right now. AI enhances everything you do. Whether you make a movie, whether you do this, whether you write an article, whatever, it enhances. So right now, let's say for the next five years, teaching your staff or your people to use AI only enhances your staff as well as your business. I think when we get to the 2030s um, or the 2040s, maybe a little different. I think AI is going to pretty much run everything. I mean, that's kind of where everybody's heading. If you look at all the technologies, if I look at the AI companies we invest in, no, they're trying to make it easier for people to work and do. And but you know, some of them making um, cognitive AI that's going to think and do. So I think when you get to that point, 
I don't know. I think AI is going to look at us as kind of useless. So. Well, I mean, yeah. If we if we just focus on on the non physical world, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna create a lot of disruption. But right. you know, we live in a physical world, and uh, you know, AI, you know, is not going to be manufacturing steel. Right? It, it'll it'll help maybe the process, but it's it, it's 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 not going to do that. Uh, I mean, you can throw it in all the data you want, but you know, at the end of the day, you, you still got to pour steel, got to melt it, you got to, you know, you got to get coke out of the earth, right? Uh, so, I think it's going to be disruptive to the middle class. It's going to freaking destroy it, right? And we're going to create a lot of inequality because the idea that uh, it just enhances. No, we know that business is rapacious for for profits, and if they can eliminate a job for a piece of software that, that does, you know, that generates the, you know, a report or writes, of course, we'll get mediocrity at a huge level because everybody will be using the same thing. And then you're like, what? Okay. So, I, you know, it's going to be yeah. interesting, but I, I think it's, it, it's uh, very detrimental to high, high, very high paying service jobs. And you know what? You know, you know, you, Steve talks about investment banking. Yeah, that could disappear easily. You know, yeah. you don't need a whole bunch of bankers. You just put a little button and boom, you know, you got a presentation, you throw in a bunch of data, you know, and uh, out you come. You know, maybe you'll need some salesmen, but hey, we could probably produce better salesmen with AI with less biases and, uh, mm. you know, more confidence. So, and even, that, more, yeah. even more empathy, actually. They were, there was a study done on, AI's bedside manners and in a medical institution and people only interacted through like my chart, you know, the Epic uh, health, health system, electronic medical record system. So they had the doctors respond through emails, through text messages, and they had AI respond. And people thought the AI was mm -hmm. more empathetic yeah. Yeah. and had better bedside manners than the doctors themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, just, that's a generational thing because when I was a kid, doctors were bedside manner. Now, doctors don't have any brains, let alone bedside manner. They're dumber than a box of rocks. Mm -hmm. so back in the day, yeah. I think that doctors actually had to go to a real medical school, get a real degree, and actually have a bedside manner. And no, now they have their iPad, and if they don't know, they're just like clicky, 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 look. Part of that is that, that you know. We financialized our entire society. So, right. you know, and we yes. got, what do we have? We have, you know, go to any medical practice and they're now becoming a part of big groups. And who's behind that? It's freaking VCs. You know, I don't know what they add. All they add is a little time slots to, yeah, yeah, they're just extracting. They're just extracting. Yeah. They add no value. Right. Right? Uh, you know, it's just pathetic, you know, but the doctors sell themselves and uh, they think they're getting a better deal, but. They're just becoming robots in themselves. Well, um, here's the other question for Michael, because last time he was on, we talked about the most favored nation status with China. China's catching up. I mean, like it's a neck and neck race between AI, if you will, in North America and AI in China. So I think that also um, is going to determine a lot of what's going to happen. Yeah. Any, any thoughts on That's that, Michael? True. Well, I, uh, I do, but I would like to... Uh, go back to something fundamental here and that is there's this tendency with all this ai as i look at it through in the media that if you could write a software program for any problem it will be resolved and there's a lot of examples the one that really bothers me right now is the is the one on predictive maintenance where they feel they can write these uh, predictive maintenance software programs and the production line, the automatic line, will somehow just keep clicking away and it'll all be solved. I'm very close to this still. Be, and when, in my years of building equipment for automatic production lines, my favorite saying was the there seemed to be no end to what the large corporations would buy in space age equipment, but they never followed it up with the kind of training. Mm -hmm. And so we as OEMs were always in trouble 
Being clear out here in Vancouver, Washington, it seemed that we were always having to send a serviceman to the other side of the country overnight, you know, to try to resolve it. They have not caught up to it. And and so my my feeling or my statement is the predictive maintenance is only going to be as good as the employees. And I could make a long case out of the fact that it has not caught up. We still to this day do not have enough trained people trying to maintain and repair and operate these big automatic production lines. But well, you, yeah, think, you need fewer say, and yeah. fewer. Oh, I mean, you need fewer and fewer people to manage these lines to begin with, right? The 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 number of people required to maintain these massive machines are fewer over time, right? Unless That's you're at right. Boeing. Unless you're at Boeing. Yeah. Unless you're at Boeing, that's a different story. So, but don't we think possibly as AI gets more, let's just say intelligent, and it, you know, like always creates like, and it creates robots and it creates this and it creates that, whether it's in five years or 50 years, the, the AI will train itself at some point and the maintenance of it will just be done by, like, so you have this big robot to say that's putting together, we'll use Boeing because you're in Washington state, so we can pick on Boeing, um, putting in doors and screws. And the machine knows it has to put in the four bolts. And if something goes wrong, the little, the little, the, the little AI dog, the little drone will come and what's the call? The little drone will come and fix it. Charlie. So, <laughs> the little drone the little drone will come and fix the bigger machine to make sure that it continues to run and at some point i would think yeah. humans become obsolete come on well, that's how, just how far are you talking about that? Well, let me tell you, let me address that issue sure. you have a something like a a great big a palletizer at the end of the line right through the vibrations of operating the machine the photocells get out of whack. Right. Somebody has to come up and physically watch them and move them. Okay. Bearings, thousands of bearings on these machines need to be uh, uh, oiled. Somebody needs to physically do that. On and, on. and I could go on and on. Right. It's There is not going to be a way that they're going to get past physically going out there and maintaining all this equipment it's it's just you know i mean what isn't there a isn't there a critical mass of ai creating its own robots to do maintenance like that movie wally from pixar where they had the robots doing the maintenance and when something was wrong it would come out and do it i mean it's how far away are we from that is a is a big question too but i kind of think steven's on the right track is is it is it an inevitability that these machines get so smart that humans aren't required to be in whatever process they do because they're going to create machines that require no human intervention. Right. Well, they to do that, the machines have to become sentient. And so I'm fond of saying that means that we're going to get to the point where we create a C-3PO robot that walks around the production line and does all these physical things. I think, you know, I'm, I'm really uh, down on that because I don't see that they're ever going to s simulate the human brain in terms of capabilities or a machine is ever going to become sentient, you know. Right. Yeah, the spark. No, I, on, on the other side of that, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. Intuitively, I want to agree with the idea that there's something special about a human being that cannot be replicated in any sort of digital technology. But how far does that go is a big question, I think. And you were talking about the idea that the people developing AI, we're talking about the Amazons, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, they're spending $200 billion in this year, in the next year on AI alone. And they're the giants. You know, Plus you've got open AI in that mix, spending their money. So. Um, what are they? What are you seeing? They care. Their, their thoughts on the workforce at all? Are they are they headed straight first into replacing the workforce without any care about what damage it may do? I think they are. 
I think that they and most of the multinational corporations are all focusing on eliminating people with this thing, but they're not really focusing on the practical aspects. And I get back to the automatic production line that the, those as you mentioned early, they're going to require intuitive, creative people that are really well trained to keep them operating. I don't see right. ever, I don't see ever a robot maintaining other robots. You know, I'd say not to the level. I mean, yeah, I, I was I was just doing some research on ASML and their uh, their extreme ultraviolet machines that create chips. And those machines, $380 million per machine, it weighs as much as two planes, and it does require human beings to assemble this thing, to maintain it, right. to adjust it slightly as, it, as it's in operation of over 30 years. It requires human intervention. There you go. Now, see, and that kind where they're doing large-scale integration, they're, they're trying to make circuits now that are, that are eight- nanometers or something a three they're down to three at mass scale okay and if if anything gets shuffled or anything the vibration of the machine is off and it's 12 uh, nanometers rather than three big that's a big problem are they ever going to make that machine completely hands off where right. nobody needs to be around but you don't need to you don't need to eliminate the entire workforce even if you even if ai is threatening 80 percent of factory worker jobs that's significant i mean 20 percent would be significant yeah it, and they are threatening well that's if you look at it this way when robots came into detroit so to speak right the auto worker union back in the day when we were mm -hmm. all well when michael and i and john were growing up michael's still like 15 but when we were back in the 60s and 70s and 80s detroit had hundreds and thousands of auto workers doing everything right. then the machines came in and went from the say 200,000 down to 100 down to 30. so at some point ai is going to do the same thing with the workforce and whether it's in 20 years or 200 years i think at some point yes machines will repair machines that will repair machines so we may not see it in our lifetime because whether it's the technology is not there or the materials aren't there or we need to come up with a new discovery before they become sentient i think it's going to be there so we'll be ahead of the curve in 2024 saying that and 200 years from now they'll look back and go oh these four guys are really smart but that's kind of i, I don't think it's unrealistic because if you if we were born in 1824 and we were looking at you know today at 20 2024 that 200 years you jet travel you know yeah, supersonic but, so it's the same type of thing in 200 years a lot can happen and i think you will replace you that's true but you can say but what when you so we're talking about the elimination of jobs that currently exist but yeah. don't we also need to think about jobs that don't yet exist because every mm -hmm. technological innovation has required a new set of humans right. to do different things. And we've had to upskill and change our, change our titles, change our skills, right. and do something new. So why not in this revolution? Right. Well, you know, we've been talk I've been talking about blue collar type work and right. why I think it's going to be difficult to totally eliminate them. But if you shift it over and look at white collar, now there, I can see where there's going to be a huge loss. I found a Goldman Sachs AI study, and it estimated that 46% of administrative positions, 44% of legal positions, and 37% of engineering jobs could wow. be eliminated by AI. Wow. And I, I had lunch with the president of a company last week, he have, they have seven plants around the world. He has established a, a, a big office in India to hold 100 people because India's uh, wage rates are one-tenth of ours. Yeah. And he, his view is he's going to uh, use them to do accounting, to do, 
to do design engineering, which is now done in the plants, and all these white collar jobs in this center, and they're with cheap uh, people. I that's his intention, and I think I think that's where it's going. And I I do see where the white collar people are in real trouble. And if it's these kinds of numbers, you're talking about millions of workers. Yeah. Well, the, okay. So the the phrase that I've heard many many times since since OpenAI really got out there and people started paying more attention to it, is that it's not that AI in the, at least in the next phase, it's not that AI is going to take your job, but it's humans that are using AI that are going to take your job. How long will that be the case? I wonder. Till it happens, yeah, or no? That how long will it be the case where humans plus AI is, are 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 going to be the the dominant force as opposed to just purely AI doing everything? I mean, how right. long do we have? If you look at the one company which we interviewed, Hero, right in call centers, that's what's happening now, right? They're using AI with humans to do a job, right? At some point, Boy, and I hate it. I yeah, I hate right? the call yeah. center. We all hate right. it. <laughs> but we all do. But, but listen, it pays the bills. Um, but at the end of the day, though, at some point, if you keep training, not training AI the way they do it today with books and the Excel spreadsheets, but really train it, which is what some of these companies are doing, have become almost, for lack of a better term, human. Then at some point, the AI is going to be able to have a dialogue with whoever and maybe be more empathetic as the, you know, if you will, like in the medical side. And at some point then as an employer, you're looking at it like, well, instead of having say 50,000 people at my call center, I can have 5,000 people. But as I said earlier, if we're gonna get, eliminate jobs, and I say this all the time when I, on the boards I sit on, I'm okay with that, we'll make more money. However, what are we gonna do with these people? Like you can't just throw them out to the street and trust me with the election coming up, if depending on who gets in, they're gonna throw these people out to the street. So you're really gonna just have two classes of people going to have very wealthy people and everybody else. Well, and that, that's, that's been happening be a problem. for 40 years. Michael's written about that. Right. That's I know that, but that's my point. But now it's getting to a point where people can't afford to do things. And that's why you see like people going to San Francisco and stealing under $900. Apparently you don't yeah. go to jail. But my point at some point when say 30 or 300 million people want to take a picnic, you're not stopping them. You know what I mean? The police can't afford to live. The military can't. Like all these. So at some point, what do we do to make sure that everybody is at least at a point where they can live? So well, how, do you that's, keep everybody, that's how do you keep everybody doing something that is at least if you give them capacity. universal income? Yeah, I don't care if you give them universal income. Give them something so they can have and give them good medical Give them whatever, but give them well, something. Well, that can so easily be used. I mean, if somebody is not doing anything, if if someone is, if a person is not employed in a, in a right. productive activity, like yeah. it could be caring for an for an elderly person, it could yeah. be caring for your children, it could be cooking for the family, it could be right. working a, a, a desk job that maybe is going to disappear. But if people aren't doing something productive, that's a that's a. It doesn't matter how much money you give them, because the issue is. They're they're there doing nothing. People are not going to do nothing. Yes, they are. People are inherently lazy. They get lazier <laughs> every year. They, gener they want to sit on their phones all day. That's great. How much money do we need to give everybody to bring up so they can mm. afford to feed and eat? And you know what? I don't care. What I don't want to happen is as we make more money and we get rid of people, and if we don't have a plan for this, yeah. what's going to happen 10 years from now when say 300 million people are like we can't feed ourselves we can't get health care yeah, we I can't mean, get this and they're like hey you know what we can do we can have a civil war that becomes a problem then well, all right so well, that's an issue well john mentioned uh, mentioned it early on in this conversation it'll lead to inequality big time we already right. have inequality but it's going to expand the distance between the very wealthy and the average worker. I don't know where that's going to lead, but I think it's it's grim. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, I think. Yeah, I think we all feel that. Uh, and when you think about, so what message would you give to the Sam Altmans of the world, the people who are really championing 
AI as the savior of, of society, as the opener, as the opening of opportunity, untold riches for all people. What message would you, Michael, give to them as they're contemplating doing AI governance, doing new laws that respect AI, policies that respect AI? I would, my feeling is to slow things down and to try to uh, put 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 more thought into what they're they're doing in these software programs. I'm, you know, they, they AI is has millions of parameters in it. It's like a black box billions, billions. where it could be that with the advances in software and in programming, and for them writing their own code. They get a black box that is opaque and nobody knows, it's, you know, really all, how it works. And you get yourself in, into uh, some big jams. Uh, so, so, but I, but I would say that the way things are really going right now, it's all the rage. They're getting a lot of investment. You know, they're, they're, it, the hype is half, half of all VC funding. Half of all VC funding last year went to AI companies, right? Let or so-called yeah. so -called AI companies. Let me let me give you the idea of all the hype. There's a gentleman who left OpenAI. He has no concept, no nothing, but they valued his company at five or six billion, and he got a billion in funding. And uh, I read this, and I, and I actually spoke to a buddy of mine in Silicon Valley, and I said, "Let me get this straight." You're writing a check to a guy that has basically just because he came from something and has a name. And he's like, yep. I'm like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's like back in the day when PEs were like 16,000. And people are like, oh, like, you know, pet.com. We're going to write them a check. It's going to be billions. It's the same type of thing. It's nice that it's all the rage, but you should have some sort of a plan. I disagree with Michael on one thing. I am very much of the Wild West mentality here. I don't want to put any restraints on AI. I'm like full steam ahead. Go ahead and destroy humanity because this is going to be a fun ride. And my friend used to joke, <laughs> like always, like always creates like, and he used to say, who knows, maybe we're AI and we destroyed our masters. And I always thought that was an interesting mm. hypothesis. And I look at this as like, let it go, baby. Let it go. We've screwed this world up so much. Uh, let's the, let the let how from nine or 2001 come and be the overlord i'm good with that i mean I can't be any worse than idiots now i don't think there's an alternative first of all i mean i i i, I am also with of that same vein because i don't see anybody slowing down and, right. and because it's an arms race because yes. if one person chooses to accelerate the race everybody has to and that's exactly what we're in we're right. in well, a race course However, gentlemen, you may consider this. Okay. We may have inadvertently committed ourselves to riding a tiger. And once on the tiger's back, we may not be able to dismount. Mm -hmm. So so what Stephen's saying, you know, let's go full speed ahead. It looks like that's that's going to happen. We It appears to me that we're going to, plunge ahead with AI without any guardrails and sort the problems out later. And that's what happens with a lot of technology. Perhaps the and most likely outcome then would be some murky mix of good and bad. And if we implement AI with no guardrails and just hope for the best, it'll be a murky mix of good and bad and you know, and and what I see happening, like most like most technologies, we implement it, then there's problems, then we learn to fix them later. Right. But this, but if if Stephen's right, and this technology is as advanced, we could be getting ourselves into some big technological problems. Or, or the technology could help us solve the problems. I mean, people are actually banking on the idea that the, the AI technology will also help us sort some of the problems. For example, the, the, the report that just came out, a bunch of academics from China and Israel raised the red flag saying, look, all this AI technology by 2030 is the equivalent of throwing away 13 billion iPhones or 2.5 million tons of e-waste 
because the pace of change, you know, all the old AI technology gets thrown away for the most part. Nobody's trying to solve that, that, that recycling workflow. But if you had a smart enough AI, couldn't it design a, uh, a circular economy or a circular manufacturing loop that would, that would actually take that e-waste and do something productive with it if we had a super intelligence as opposed to just us trying to figure it out? It could, but let's focus on some of the downsides of, of this advanced stuff. AI's language, as I understand it, they can do audio image generating abilities mm -hmm. And it'll be a yeah. boon to online criminals and conspiracy promoters. They'll love this stuff. There'll be uh, the potential of deceptions, hoaxes, scams, frauds is formidable. I mean, we already go through this uh, every day, wow. but but they're going to have the tools where they can create your face and Right. You know, simulate and, and your voice right. and everything else. Don't you think that this is this is fraught with some future problems for the citizenry? Well, so I'm gonna pick I'm gonna one of the companies we interviewed, you can't do that. Their AI will detect if it's a fraud because they're doing like seven layers of security, whether it's your voice or your fate. They are like making sure that you can't fraud somebody you can't become that person well, like, and they have the technology to, to check it out and make sure that it's proper i so i think it becomes up to the companies to put to your point earlier about guardrails i think there's always going to be someone who's going to try to scam you whether it was back in the 1800s or today where you get the robo call or someone calling with your voice now going i've been kidnapped i'm like good for you be kidnapped send me a body part and we'll discuss and you hang up um but i mean it's, I think that's where we are. And I think to, to your point, there's always going to be good and there's always going to be evil and there'll be something in the middle. So I think it's going to be up to you as a person or your AI to figure out if this is good, bad, or indifferent. And I think come that's on. just going to be there no matter what. What do you mean? Come on now to what, John? Look, you know, we, we've had this naive concept that, you know, that when we started with, with computers and software, where we right. never put, where we never thought about security. That's true. from the get-go and putting it into the system. And we've paid the price for that for the last 30, 40 years, right? AI needs to incorporate security from the get-go. And unless, you know, you got somebody with, 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 with a stick, most of these companies, if it's not in the U.S., it's going to be in, you know, in Israel or it'll be in China or in Russia. Right. They're, they're going to say, I don't care. You know, we're going to do whatever we're going to do. And we're going to, so at as much as I dislike regulation, and uh, I, th I think we need to regulate it because this is just, it's just not a, a little technology that's just going to be like, oh, yeah, we can fix yeah, it's, it. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like, I mean, we regulate nuclear technology. Why would you not regulate a, a technology that's and see how well that well. And regulating nuclear technology, yes, yeah, see how well that has gone. You know, Three Mile Island, Fukushima. I mean, I can go through it, but uh, yeah. Why don't we not regulate it? And my point is because humans are stupid. I don't care if you're the smartest guy on the planet or the dumbest. You're just, humans at Hanley, we're stupid. We have no clue. Let AI just do it. And I go back to my point, and I know this sounds kind of dumb, but we've already screwed up the planet. We don't do anything to fix it. You, leaders of the countries are dumber than the average citizen. Maybe AI can actually bring things into an orderly fashion and where we all actually have a utopia where right. everybody can kind of just be taken care of. That's, Remember, yes, I know that's Star Trackish. Yeah, but you maybe said that's it. Too and, it. Stupid, and that's a stupid idea. Come yeah, on. There you go. That's why we need AI. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, AI is going to fix everything. No, because this, you know, if you enable a technology, it's like giving a gun, you know, to somebody. Yep. Uh, most people won't do anything bad with it, but there's right. enough twits out there with twisted minds. Uh, and that's going to do bad things. So, you know, the same thing with AI. We, we need to well, I think John's, John's point about, the, about getting the guardrails in the beginning and not after, th right. that's not happening. The way yeah, I no, see right, this, true. The, to Stephen's point, is we are rapidly accelerating in all kinds of areas with AI. There is very little, from what I could tell, effort at trying to set up the safety guardrails at the beginning. 
So what it's going to end up being, in my opinion, is we're going to develop it, then there will be problems, and then we'll fix the problems after the fact. That's what I'm, Americans are not into preventative maintenance. Yes, <laughs> or medicine. Right. And, and it's really funny. We're competing now with the Chinese. I mean, the Israelis, we are, we, we're competing, but I don't think as much, even though they have some of this really interesting technology. But right now, it's an arms race, for lack of a better term, with the Chinese, because um, they're really pushing forward on the AI. And I think part of the hypothesis is why we don't want to, like the EU is trying to regulate AI for everything. I think part of the hypothesis in America is we don't want to regulate it because the Chinese aren't regulating it and they're going to blow right. past us. So I think it's this next 12 or 18 month, lack of a better term, arms race in AI. And I think people are like, just go, do, 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 because the Chinese are like, screw you, we're going to go do. Um, and I think at some point, whether AI regulates itself or we say, okay, now we've got to this you know, utopia and now we have to regulate it. But yeah, I think for the next foreseeable future, let's say five years, the regulation that's going to come down, as we spoke about, is, is too late. The cow is already out. You know, the cows and horses are out oh. of the barn. You can't close the door. And I think we're going to have to corral it in at some point. But to Michael's point, now we're going to ride the tiger. And you just, what, what it is is what it is. And that's going to be, the, I, to me, as scary as that is, it's also going to be the fun part of the next, say, 20 years. Well, but see where um, we go with it. Even, even Sam Altman, way back in May, said, you know, went to Congress and said, you have to regulate us. You have to regulate us. Congress, AI stop. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> no, but he's, but he's going to, you know, the seemingly, supposedly democratic body representing the people to, to raise the red flag and say, look, there's right. going to be a problem with jobs and we have to figure out how collectively we're going to solve that. Now, nothing has happened since then, as far as I can tell. And the thing is, it is a social discussion that has to happen. Just like going back to your original point, Stephen, that uh, what are we going to do with all the people who are almost immediately displaced right. and go from $100,000 of income to zero overnight with, with no upskilling opportunities available? Yeah. And, and but that's my point. Our government, the people we pay for and that we elect, I think that we work for them, not the other way around. Useless as tits on a bull. Yeah, they have no clue. They're not doing anything, and they don't care because they line their pockets. So if it's and so unless you come up collectively, and Musk is not going to help because Musk just wants to be a trillionaire. So unless you can do something to say, okay, listen, everybody is a level playing field, and we're going to take care of everybody, and we're going to do this whether you want to work or not. Don't care. Everybody can afford to live then you're going to have a problem. And the problem is going to come when 80% of the population is in the, I can't afford to do this. I can't pay for this. And we're not doing anything about it. I've been discussing this for 10 years as we've taken over things and we have to displace people. I'm like, what are we going to do to make sure they're okay? The biggest thing is, and Michael's first question was, is it people? Is it the people always have to be okay. I mean, if you read a history book, when the people aren't okay, it's bad, whether it's for government or for business. As long as the people are okay, you're okay. You can keep growing and becoming richer and whatever you want to do. But you have to take them with you, not to your extent, but you have to make sure they can afford basic things and give them things. And if you don't, I don't. your AI is, is at some point, if everyone's out of work, then what are you going to do? Well, the question is, how do, you, how, do you, how do you share? And Sam Altman said it too, not to quote him too much, but how do you how, in, in the in the age of abundance that come the potential age of abundance that comes from AI in the sense that you can have some people can have whatever they want at any time? How do you share that? How do you make sure that all people can in some way benefit from that abundance? Right now, the wealth redistribution that happened and the wealth concentration that happened since COVID is unprecedented in human history. Yeah. In terms of the top one percent getting uh, leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of the rest of the world, mm -hmm. that's accelerating. Is what Michael brought up. Where's the system that's going to redistribute in a way, redistribute or re-equalize this inequality? It doesn't exist. It's Bad. not there. And so we're as as I said, we're going to plunge ahead with this stuff until we cause problems and then we'll we'll address the problems 
But let me ask you a bigger thing. In measurement, do you think AI will change productivity uh, in the country, economic productivity in terms of, you know, um, man hours, um, however they, they measure productivity? The internet never, never uh, produced the productivity that it was supposed to. In fact, um, my good friend Jeff Ferry, who's an economist, says the introduction of the internet did not improve U.S. productivity in terms of output per hour worked. It did not improve. It was 1.5% between 2007 and 2024, far below the 2.7% that we had from World War II, you know, up until the, the boom. He doesn't think that AI is going to impact productivity positively or create more productivity measure. And that's the final measurement, you know, economically of whether this stuff is going to really well, work. One, it's a it's a it's a terrible measurement to think that GDP is the only way that we should be measuring satisfaction or or even productivity. But I mean, let's well, not I'm have. I'm not saying it's stuff. the only no, way, no, but I, it's I know, it's I a know. way, isn't it? It's a way. It's a way to do it. But even that. if you even if you but let's just accept it and let's say GDP is the way to measure it and and is the right way to measure it. Um, AI is already having positive impact on productivity, such that people can. I mean, people you, with GitHub Spark, which was just released two days ago, it's a technical preview where you put in, just you just say what you want, and it programs it for you. It gives you actual code. Now, this is a very early technology, but this is what we're gearing for, is that now any person could tell the computer what they want to see on screen and what they want the program to do, and the program will just program itself to do it. That would be hugely productive, right? Because then everybody who has an idea even can create what they want and they don't have to wait for a hundred thousand dollar or more programmer to program it for them. I think there is, a, AI is different, I think, than the internet. No? So you're saying then it with all these fancy uh, new capabilities that will probably increase productivity per man or worked. Is that what you're saying? I yeah, I mean, I I feel like I feel like I'm more productive in the in the two years that I've been using it because I'm able to have brainstorming sessions that, as working at a startup, wasn't able to have because we're a small ship, and I'm able to put together plans that would have taken me days. I'm able to at least get the framework of it in a much shorter period of time. So I think in that, in terms of that output, I think so. But then again, you. you so there's one other side to it, and I think you were pointing to this, Michael, is that it's a competitive landscape, too, in terms of productivity. If everybody's using it, maybe Stephen said it, too, if everybody's using the same tools, then are you really going to get relative productivity? I, I don't know. Well, look at it this way. Unlike our little world of investments, if I can program AI, which some people are already doing, but everybody now can program AI to play the stock market or to play options mm -hmm. or to play gold or play currencies, in theory, everyone's going to become a billionaire. You can start with $10, and by the end of the week, you have 100 And at the end of the next week, you have 1000 And at the end of the next week, you have 10000 Because AI, with all the other AIs, you're going to be like, oh, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. Buy, sell, buy, blah, blah, blah. And before you know it, in theory, then everybody is wealthy. So, I mean, well, I think it can, I, don't know I mean, at some point, John. No, I mean, because, it, it, go ahead. Because the it's a, a market is two it's two sided for every buyer there's a seller so if everybody right. uses the same technology there's no buyers or there's no sellers so it's it doesn't awesome. create any form. How, how does <laughs> how does blackrock do it with aladdin you know doesn't doesn't aladdin control like 80 percent of the yeah. of the, they the lamp and, and the genie comes out yeah, and, they talk yeah, yeah. and barbara yeah. eden does a i don't know thing. i mean ai thing. you know has has its has its role yeah, right. the problem with regulating, as, as Steve points out, that you know, China, you know, is you know, they want to use this as as a way to to even increase their their competitive advantage and control over us. Right. So yeah, I mean, it's a it's you uh, know, it's it's a difficult decision. The, the productivity question, if you look back 
to 2000 when the Chinese were let into the game. And we started really outsourcing the multinationals outsourced by the, you know, we lost three to 4 million manufacturing jobs just because of outsourcing and China. It was that during that time that productivity fell to 1.5%. Now, who's to say that our, that this generative AI is going to be done here in the, in the mm. country? My, my friend, the president was telling me he's moving his AI is all going to be done in Bangalore, India. Right. So that's not going to mm. contribute to productivity in the United mm. States. So well, do, you, do you think that AI is going to be largely done in the United States or it'll be shipped out like everything else? No. I, well, if Trump becomes president, he, he everyone's coming back. According to him, and a lot of what he says, Congress has to pass, and we know how good Congress is. So good luck with that. <laughs> um, the companies that some of the companies we're working with are having it done in Vietnam, India, and other places because you know they can pay, if you will, a hundred thousand a month for a team of X, where they'd have to pay a hundred thousand here, and they're getting better work. Eastern Europe, Latvia, the rest of those places. So I think it's going to be done globally. It's going to be done. I think AI will be developed globally. But I think the countries that will use it will be, if you will, the United States and China, because right now it's still that superpower race. And I think AI is going to determine, maybe not in the short term, but in the long term, who the superpower really is. Yeah. Um, do you, do so you think it's like the space race all over again? Yeah, but uh, with, with more, more, with more consequential. Yeah, more, more consequential. I think the, country, the countries that will do well with, with AI developing yeah. it are the people go back to the physical world it's about physics yeah. and the people that have or the countries that have the cheapest energy electricity yeah. are the ones that are going to win the race because let's face it it's chips and you know okay data and data needs electricity and, and this water. is why this is why all these big companies are, 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 are racing to to get small nuclear reactors and even yeah. in, in microsoft re, restarting three mile island yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> one of the one of the yeah, you laugh, but there's nowhere else. Oh no, I think it's going to be great. Nowhere else, yeah, nowhere else Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania needs to glow again because uh, you can't find you, it. Anymore. You you don't you can't get any energy, you know, with with that's that's right. cheap, relatively cheap, stable, and uh, you know, clean. That's not you know uh, nuclear. You know, you can't do it with sun mm -hmm. and and uh, it, it gets cloudy. You know, and, and you, you, you're your host. You don't have the battery, so you know, cheapest energy is. I think it wins the race. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I think with all the technology that's coming out, with like the chips that we've saw a couple of weeks ago that are going to use one one thousandth less power, I think that helps. I think the technology yeah. can't just be about we have the best AI. It's got to be about our AI and our chips use less power, and our chips do this, and our chips do that. So I think there's a lot that ties into it. But if we're just talking to like what Michael speaks about, which is um, China, and you speak about the U.S., which is really what most people are going to be concerned about, not so much the laws, like the laws, there's none. And our Congress is useless. And so is our government. So let's just forget that. It is going to be a race to see who can develop the AI that takes over, for lack of a better term, the world. And Sam Altman can preach to Congress all he wants about people and technology and, and EU can do the same thing. It's falling on deaf ears. It is now going to be a race to the finish line. And whoever wins that race is your superpower is, say, 2030. And it's that simple. And so it's going to be a race between the U.S. and it's going to be a race between China. Well, it's, it's the race between, you know, the, the, the ostensible democracy and authoritarianism. That's the race. Well, we're going to have authoritarianism here and next year. So no, it's the same no, thing. No. I have to tell you that. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, no. yeah, the orange man wins, my friend. I don't think, just, I think Even the ostrich is. isn't going to win. It's no, the orange okay. man. You can move to Thailand then. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to. You know, I'm going to stay here because I'm going to be. I'm going to be friends with the orange man, and then I can have my own little. You know, my own little. Yeah. What call my own little town. You can build so. a little city yourself. Yeah. There you go. I can build my own little city. But I'm just saying, it, it's that's where we are. Um, we've become a globe of I have to have more than you and not give back. And I don't want to mention any names, Elon Musk. But yeah, yeah, yeah. because of that, 
we're it's a, now it's going to be a governmental it's going to be a person like i said these guys are coming out of open ai and people are throwing billions at them and i read the stuff and i'm like but you're not producing anything well i think i have an idea right but you're not producing anything mm -hmm. where companies that are producing people are like oh i don't know if i like that you don't like it because you don't understand it but they've got pads so i'm fascinated by the stupidity of the venture capital groups and the stupidity of everybody in general when it comes to this so it's just one of those things i don't know what do i know michael what else is in your article that you can give us a preview about well i uh, you know i i had I, there's a lot of stuff in there about the downside i'm particularly worried about the ability to increase the the deceptions the hoaxes the scams and the frauds I think that they're, this is going to be really benefit to online criminals. I think I've, that's my fear, uh, but it could also lead to if more authoritarianism. When you look at uh, the the uh, the ability to control populations like the Chinese Communist Party does with their people. I mm -hmm. think this this open a, this generated AI is going to really uh, increase their ability to both surveil and control populations. So I think it'll be a great benefit to autocratic leaders. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's, so you're absolutely absolutely on the right track because. Uh, yeah, you, you know, AI will be able to just monitor everybody's financial accounts, every activity that they do. Uh, they'll be able to, they already read, the government already reads your comments on social media and reacts to it. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a huge tool for, for bad governments, authoritarian. Say, just an example is 10 years ago, I knew that China had put software into the traffic lights and they can see the license plates or they can see people jaywalking and breaking the rules. And then they, the computer sends them out uh, a court appearance or a fine. You know, I mean, you take that by and expand it tenfold and you can see where surveillance will go in the future. I think this is bad news. Yeah, mm. definitely. But but we already have surveillance. Like if you go fly, right? With TSA, you have your known number. They're they already reading your phone, they emails. Do, yeah, they're already reading your emails. They already have cameras that send you tickets. So I think for your point on authoritarianism, I think it's going to be just they're going to read. The AI can read quicker. It will figure out if you're good or bad. And if yeah. the regime determines if you're bad, then some nice gentlemen are going to knock on your door and then you're going to disappear. So I think that's where people are, I think, worried. But most of the American public or the public on the planet doesn't really, they don't, they're not thinking like that. They're just like, oh, how's it going to make my life better? You know, like, or they're scared because they read some articles in The Economist or this or that. So I think it's one of these things that, once again, we don't know until we know, but I'm, I'm hoping it makes things better, not worse. And you can use any technology for good or evil. You know what I mean? So I, I, sure. it's, a, it's a hard line, I think, to, uh, to say what we really think is going to happen with it. I, I'm hoping that it just it does something phenomenal. I don't know what that yeah. will be, but I hope it does something yeah. phenomenal. But like I said, right now. But hope uh, is not a strategy, right? Yeah, right. yeah. And unfortunately, the AI will come up with a strategy, I guess. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm, we're gonna have in our lifetime, yep, in all our lifetimes, we're going to yeah. be shocked. We'll be, we'll be shocked. Hope where AI is not a plan. No, all I'm aware. It's not a plan. Well, we you know, the, if you, you know, the, if you follow the Ukraine war, now they're right. using a, a lot of uh, the uh, drones, military right. drones. Warming. I can see a time where they, the AI sophistication will turn it over to the drone to yeah. make the decision uh, on who to shoot, and it won't there won't be any moral guardrails involved. Once you set it into the sky, you know, it's going to do its job without any restrictions. 
those are the kind of things that really uh, worry me. And mm. well, how, I mean, you got to You got to So one of the one of the ideas was to. I think it was some AI researcher said, "Look, one way to 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 create good AI is to somehow instill it with values and principles, as you would raising a human being." Yes. Uh, I don't know how you do that programmatically, but if you if you if you somehow programmed in a concept of values and ethics and principles, right. then you know, like Asimov's like Asimov's principles, right? Okay. That's a very basic version of it, but don't hurt you humans. That kind of defeats through your military drone. Don't hurt humans. That's oh, kind of, like chills, that kind of chills it. Yeah. How, do you, how, do you, how do you do that? Program in values. And yeah. one one thing I found online was uh, is using AI in the criminal justice system, and it would be the software that would make a determination whether you were 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 still on parole or would be released huh. as near as i can tell michael is the the technology you know we're in this gallop you know into the future and i don't see people really spending a lot of time on no. morals or values no. right now no. it's all I'm about the tech industry i don't think it either, Stephen yeah. said getting billions of dollars for an idea it's all about pushing the technology and the, it's not about the people. It's not I, about the people. I said it there was in my the final paragraph. Let me read my final thought about how it is. We are a techno technologically rich civilization addicted to software solutions and averse to the people implications of our decisions. That's where it is right now. It will be interesting to see if the costs exceed the gains. Hmm. That's interesting, yeah. It may, it may. What do you think? I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. But let me just say something about your prison with AI. There's an article that's either in The Economist or the Financial Times as they were talking about a software, of course, AI software, that when you go to prison, instead of being there for 20 years, they put you in some sort of a a thing chamber do whatever to your brain so it'll seem like 20 years but you're only there for like a couple of days and it's supposed to rehabilitate you so you come out this new it's like george orwell's 1980 yeah right yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's it that's interesting so basically yeah, you should write a book and it happens so it's going to be interesting to see that but then i'm like then what do we do with these people so you're rehabilitating them what are you gonna have them write code and be a police i mean so I, the concept of what we can do with it is great, but to what you just read to your paragraph, it all sounds good in, in theory and hypotheses and principles. Now you have to actually implement it. And I don't think people really are going to implement it for good. It's like, oh, I can control someone's mind. I can do this. I can do that. I think it's really going to go back to how do we make money? It's all about, unfortunately, we're not a society that we care about each other. We're a society of I need to have more. That's the financialization that John was pointing out earlier. I yeah. mean, that's that's exactly what it is. It's because the greed is good became a principle that everybody yeah. seemed to follow, or enough yeah, enough, awesome. enough people seem to follow. Yeah. Let me give a let me give a real basic example. Sure. Out here, out here, we have to to do our cable. We have Comcast. And I hate Comcast. They do <laughs> they do just an incredible number of bad things yeah. to us users. So when you try to call them, first of all, they do everything in their power to never put a person on the line. Mm -hmm. And when they when you call in for a question, like last night, I was watching my favorite program, and it I get a blank screen for six minutes. It happens almost every night. When I try to call them, when you call them, they say, well, listen, we'll put the chat bot on and the mm -hmm. chat bot can answer your questions. And in chat bots and, you know, and the AI, I would say that in the last five years, I've never gotten a solution or an answer to my question. Right. So I'm, a chat I'm hoping that AI improves this, <laughs> but right now it's still terrible. 
Yeah. You, cannot, you know, you, you whatever, you know, you call in, you guys know all know that. You call yeah. the doctor or a medical company or something. If you can just get to Agnes, you know, <laughs> she'll te- she can tell you in 30 seconds, yeah. right? You know what you need to know. But yeah. if you go through the artificial intelligence stuff, they never really, there aren't enough programmed alternatives, I guess. Right. But Com, do you guys have Comcast back in the No, East? God forbid. God forbid. I used they to have it and I got rid terrible. of it. terrible. Oh, and I know. you said, you know, and it's all about money with Comcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They keep raising the prices and and stuff and and the and the service is pretty much a thing of the past. And so yeah. I'm wondering yeah. whether with artificial intelligence, this stuff is going to get worse rather than better. What Maybe do you think? not. I think it may get better because artificial intelligence done right, and right being the key word, actually can be helpful because if it can not, I'm going to say think, but not think if you will, but if it can think and go and answer questions and resolve things quicker for you, because they've trained it to do so instead of a bot that can do absolutely nothing because they trained it wrong, then I think it, you can go, hey, I have a problem. It'll be like, no problem. It can go boom, boom, boom. You're done and you're fixed because it can do everything for you. The problem is today they just trained it on an Excel spreadsheet. So it doesn't do anything other than the, say, 50,000 commands it knows. It can't go past that. The new right. AI, the things that we see that are coming out, they don't teach it that way. They teach it like you teach a child. Like they teach, this is a word, this is what it means, the next and the next. So it, like it goes through an education process. So the, the stuff that we see is not the AI, not chat GPT, not like how they train it. It is trained as a human. And so when they put it into place, it seems to do much better because it can actually almost think on its own and get you to a solution. So I think if we do that, I think your problems at Comcast would be done, but then Comcast will be too cheap to buy the new AI. So you're screwed. Sorry. So, <laughs> yeah. so but yeah, I think, I think if it's done right, it will be helpful. Um, I don't think you can teach it. Unfortunately, you talked about earlier, like morals and this and that, and what's right or wrong, because what's right to just say us in China may be wrong and vice versa. So I think you can give it an underlining, like, this is kind of like, here you go. And then it's going to have to make decisions on its own, I mean, especially if you have military drones or you have this or you have that. So it just depends. You know, the healthcare ones should do something different. And so we'll see. But that's what I'm saying. I think the next five or 10 years in AI will be very exciting. And uh, hopefully we'll, you know, the earth will still be here so we can see it. So, yeah, but we'll see. All right. Michael, well, that's a great to conversation. See yeah, yeah, Michael, wonderful to have you back on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Always, Michael. Anyway. Before you before you leave, do you have a prediction for Tuesday, or do you want to stay out of that? <laughs> well, I'm uh, I'm feeling that uh, it's going to be a real close election, but I think that Harris might prevail. Ooh, in this. Okay. Very and interesting. I, yeah, I I just think that uh, that Donald. Had particularly in the last several months, has done enough stuff to really, to really arm people with a lot of reservations. And when they go into that booth to make their X, right. they're gonna, they're gonna be real hesitant to go for him because he's made it pretty clear, you know, what his administration is gonna be. I, I think that people will step back and enough of them will will not vote okay. for him and it'll be another squeaker and but I think she'll prevail. That's my view. Well, I think we hope we all hope you're right. I read the article in the New York Times this week that said what Donald Trump new government would look like. And every paragraph, because it would take a topic, whether it was justice or education, everything just got worse and worse and worse and worse. And I'm like, this isn't good. So um, that's why I'm like AI. Speculation, hypothetical. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. Let's go with that. Michael, as always, it's a pleasure. Hopefully we'll see you in December and we'll talk about whatever the topic is you'd like to talk about. Okay. I've, I've got lots of things still coming up, so I'll yeah. send you some ideas. We love it, Michael. Okay. You're the best. 
Thank you so much. And if we don't see you before Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. The best to your family. Same, same to you guys. All right, we'll see you soon. Cheers. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care, Mike. Love him. Like one of our best oh, yeah. guests. Him, him and Guy Stan they could do those two like that's every that's week. That's 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 awesome. Awesome. I know. Yeah. I, that, we really should see if Guy will stay up late and have Mike right, and Guy right. do the show together. That would be really cool, especially after the election. Yeah, yeah. That would be a good show to have Guy and Mike. You gotta, give it, you gotta give it a few weeks and then you see where it's it right, settles. Right. Yeah. We'll get to see who wins. But yeah. you, we should have Guy, well, I think we should have guy and Mike on together. I, I'm going to let you take care of that. They can't count votes overnight anymore. Now it takes <laughs> weeks to figure yeah. it out. So, yeah. We joked about that on Vaguely True. I said, you know, I used to be, I'd go to bed go and I'd get up in the morning. The Wall Street Journal would be at my doorstep. I'd pick up the paper and it's like, oh, so-and-so is president. Or I could go on you know, my phone on the Financial Times and see who was president. I said, now I have to wait 30 days because of all the courts. So I said, I'm not going to wake up the next morning and know who president is. So yeah, in December, maybe we have them come together <laughs> and we ask Guy to stay up a little later since he's in Switzerland yeah. and have yeah. Michael and Guy. And we don't have to do anything then. That'll be the guy like that's an hour where you just sit here and look pretty. That'll um, be a great, that would be a great we'll show. We'll do our best. We'll do our best to look pretty. Yeah. There you go. All right. Let's yeah. run an ad and pay some bills and then we'll do some lost and found. What do you think, guys? Sounds good. Right. Let's do it. Get the freedom and the flexibility of remote work in the lucrative tech industry. Bend your life around, around the world. Bendicoot is the premier course and community for thriving in a remote tech career. Join the revolution today. Bendicoot.com, official partner of the Lost Dollar Business Club. Ever wonder how millions vanish into thin air or how a single dollar can make all the difference? Join us on Lost and Found, where we dive into the wild world of financial mysteries. From misplaced fortunes to unexpected windfalls, we unravel the stories of people, companies, organizations, and even governments who've lost and found millions. Lost and found because every dollar has a story. All right. David just keeps playing and finding stuff to keep making the graphics better and better. That guy counting the money, well, I'm looking at it, go, that looks like me. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> he's having fun with it. David's having, yeah, he's fun. having he's having a good time. John's like, uh, all right, John, what do you got? You've had a whole hundred and seventy hours now to come up with your latest lost and found. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> October this morning, 8 30, we had the non-farm payrolls. Right. It came in at a shocking only twelve thousand, you right. know, uh, well below the expected. And October, of course, was revised. Lower, but as usual, from two hundred and fifty-four thousand to two hundred and twenty-three thousand. So, uh, so we're just thirteen thousand from a negative print. So, we'll see how how this all plays out for for the election. But I don't know. I guess it's uh, that. And they'll revise it next month. Dollar. It'll be negative. It'll be yeah. negative yeah. next month. They'll revise yeah. October next month for you, John. Don't yeah. worry. So, they, I got one more though, which is yeah, yeah. A, a little different. So, according to the blockchain association the sec has cost crypto firms something in something to the order of 426 million under the administration of uh gary gensler who's the cftc uh, right. sec no he's actually the sec now sec guy right yeah yeah so they brought in a total of something like 104 cases against uh, these firms you know so okay well, they both, they both, the new, the, the two president, vice, the two president candidates are saying how much they love crypto. Yeah. Um, so, so we'll see. I mean, Donald Trump's new crypto came out and it like tanked. Um, yeah. And Ms. Harris has been entertaining crypto, but all the crypto guys keep writing Donald checks, not Harris. So yeah. it would be, I would write them both a check. If I was a crypto guy, I'd be like, here's mm -hmm. 50 million for you and 50 million for you, just yeah. in case. So that's like, I'm hedging my bets. But yeah, it'll be interesting yeah. to see after Crypto's, the election what happens. Crypto's going to stick around though, I think. Yeah. I think so. But re remember, all the governments have their own digital currency. And at some point, if right. they decide to get rid of it, it's a flip of a switch yeah. and your imaginary money goes bye-bye. And I don't care that BlackRock has a fund and this one has a fund. If the Chinese tomorrow and the Indian government, the Russians, the Americans, they all get together and you go, you know what? Screw them. And they go, click. Well, you can't do anything. You have no asset. It's all it's all make-believe assets. It's an algorithm. 
as we call it, yeah. it's a crypto yeah. algorithm. So yeah, it's something to keep. Now, if Trump gets in, I think you're okay. I think he's going to keep it because he's going to use it for whatever he's going to use it for. He'll make a new Trump coin or whatever. So I'm, I'm that's positive. If Harris gets in, I, I'm going to see what her administration does. I'm not. I, I like crypto for what it could be used switch. for. Switch, you know, she went from supporting it now and then boom now it's not <laughs> yeah. like the minute harris says it's no good she's right it's no good but i think for other things like tokenization of assets and what i think there's a lot of good things you can use it for you just have to make sure that the government or governments you're playing with um agree with you because i would hate to not have it one day you know what i mean i think yeah. dubai uae they're going to keep it forever because they're trying to be a crypto hub um there's other countries that are like singapore and whatnot so i think globally yes it's just the country you live in maybe not so as long as you can go somewhere else and get it, I think you're okay. Mm. My opinion. What do I know? I read a book once. Right. So there you go. Michael? Well, I've got uh, I've got one thing related to AI for us today is, and something <laughs> that maybe we, we forget, and it's maybe related to what Stephen and Michael were talking about today, is that there's a there's a, a wild, it's called, it, they're saying it's a wild study in, in, in the science alert, saying that if, if you do achieve uh, an an artificial super intelligence, you know, right. that's well beyond humans, that maybe that's what the great filter is that prevents biological societies from actually advancing. Because by the time you create the ASI, uh, the alignment from the ASI to the biological entity is no longer, does no right. longer exist. And so the biological entity uh, also no longer exists. So people have read about the, talked about the great filter plenty of times uh, in terms of why we don't technically see aliens yet. Some people believe we have, some people believe we haven't. But if we haven't found, a, yeah, if we haven't found, <laughs> a, if we haven't found a super intelligent alien race yet, maybe it's because they got AI too soon and AI also took over like it's going to do here. Oh, you know, if AI takes over. There you go. It'll be Hal from 2001. Or there be, you go. Uh, now, I, I think yeah. to your point, yes. And and I think like the one, because there's companies out there working on super intelligence. That's why I'm like, let the floodgates open and let it just do it. Because even if you regulate it, if you're super, if you have super duper AI, you know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to be like, yeah, we'll just work around it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like at the end of the day, you can regulate all you want, but you can't regulate it because if it's smarter than you, how are you going to regulate yeah. it? Yeah, how do you regulate something that's smarter than you? Choose to regulate AI, you know, so it, I think it's going to be interesting. I don't know. It'll be fun to see. I'm looking forward to the next, you know, few hundred years to see what happens, you know, being with the Maybe the politicians <laughs> will use an AI platform to, to, to ask it for it to create the regulation for itself <laughs> you know that's, that's you know awesome. the lawyers who are working on it are already using yeah. chat gpt to yeah because yeah. yeah, they got fined the judge in new york the one law firm was charging 650 dollars for a legal opinion it was written by ai and it was wrong so the right. judge made them like rebate like a three or four million dollars back to clients which i thought was great all right i have two real quick ones one last quarter byd outsold tesla um, which I thought was very good. And BYD, yep. is, from what I can tell, makes a great product and they're not made out of plastic and don't fall apart, allegedly. Um, and Mr. Musk made a comment, and Bloomberg wrote a whole article um, that Mr. Musk was saying that he wants to cut because apparently he's president and he's also South African. So apparently he's now allowed to be president in our country because he has money, but he wants to cut $2 trillion out of budgeting and whatever for America. And he wants to cut. And I read this and I was like, I, people I know don't read it, um, and I, so their vote for Trump is like a vote for Musk, I guess. He wants to cut Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, um, and other social services and get rid of departments. So basically, everybody who's been putting into Social Security, he wants to just get rid of it. He says, we don't need it. I'm like, oh, great. I mean, you that's the politically Trump? not even a viable decision, I think. Yeah. Well, it depends who's running Congress and the Senate when... Trump brings it to the floor if they really do that. But my point was the fact that he would say such a thing and, you know, everyone's like, oh, Musk is the, Musk is an idiot. I mean, it's great. You have $230 billion and, you know, good for you. But you can't, when, it goes back to what I said earlier on the show. You can't screw with 300 million people at some point. Oh, right, right, right. They're going to be like, you know what? Screw you because you don't pay them enough, whether it's your military, your police, teacher. People are just going to be enough. It'll be the pitchforks and torches pretty soon. So, you know, 
you know, wake up and smell the uh, pitchfork uh, and torches, I guess. He, he may he may be an idiot, but he did get that rocket to land itself. Uh, that was technology yeah. from the 60s yeah. that was already patented. Caught. Just so we're clear. That was, right, that realize was, that, right? Yeah, that was yeah. that was someone else's patent from the '60s. He just had the money to build it, so it's like his boring. Right. He got the boring from 1893. On that machine that bored the Vegas Tunnel was from somebody else. Well, so, look, you know, let's just like let's think. I know Michael's sucking up just in it case. Doesn't matter, you know, the technology is a lot of technology is a lot of technology is old, but you know yeah. what? Boeing didn't implement it. NASA didn't implement it. That's, just, I agree with that. He, he gets yeah. things done at, at a speed that nobody else does. Right. It, would, it would take 10 years to, to get one rocket yeah. to do that. He did it in 19 months. Yeah. I mean, oh, no, no. I'm know, not taking uh, that away from him. I'm just saying, you know, I, I'm not trying to be rude. I guess I am in a way. Just literally must just shut the fuck up. Like nobody cares what your opinion is politically. Just because you have 230 million and you got to, you had patent trolls find you your patents and you can get things done expeditiously. I'm happy with that, but stay out of, you know, you want to get rid of things. I mean, that's the it, whole, that's the whole, like, should celebrities be talking? Right, should we care about what celebrities think about politics? Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. I agree with this. Is, is, right. is Bill Gates a doctor? I mean, it goes into right, the whole right. thing. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that he has a first amendment and literally you can say what you want. Like we can say, you know, now until the orange man becomes president, then we can't say anything, but um <laughs> I'm just assuming, but I'm just saying it, it's like, I'm glad you have your first amendment, right? And this is what you want to do, but people are going to can turn around and go, you know what? Then South Africans that have citizenship shouldn't be allowed to own something. And that would be my opinion. And then all of a sudden, well, that's terrible. So it's the same type of thing. It's like, be careful what you say, because you're not in touch with reality because you have 230 billion and you're not worried about X. So the people on social security and Medicare, they can't afford things. They're worried about X. Not well, I mean, if, if you want to land a criticism on Musk, I mean, he he talks about he actually said things like Americans need to take a haircut. We need yeah. to live more, uh, more uh, frugally. But the yeah. question is, is he going to do that? Is yeah, he going to do not. that? Of course not. Yeah. So, Come yeah. So lead by on. example, pal. And you know what? You don't need 230 billion. Give like uh, 200 of it away and then we'll believe what you say. Until then, eh, shut up. So and, you know, we've invited him on the show and and, I, yeah. and, and, and he doesn't show and we would be very nice to him. Did you get and, an answer? Um, you, he, I, I told the story before. I'll tell it again. I don't know if I told it here. David has sent emails to Harris, Trump, Putin, uh, Kim Jong Un. And to Musk to come on the show. The response, guess who responded and said that they would get back to us within six months to let us know yes or no? Putin. The Ruski. Yes. No, the Ruski responded and said, thank you. We will consider it and we'll get back to you within six months or so. I think we're three or four months into the six. Everybody else totally ignored us. And I'm laughing. I told David told me this before we did a show one day. I just started to laugh. I'm like, let me get this straight. Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Is the one who wrote not him personally just yeah. responded to you saying because people are like we may we, we'll think about it everyone else has ignored you and he said yep i'm like that is crazy so for all these people how wonderful they are and we'll go on youtube and we'll <laughs> talk to whoever you're so full of crap um and not that i'm a putin fan but at least they give his people credit they responded he's got a better Who's media team wow yeah yeah, yeah. Kudos to them for at least responding. Not that if he would come on the show, that'd be great. I'm not sure how that would go since none of us just have an AI program that responds to email. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but you know what? At, at least you would think Musk would have that. Yeah, Mr. Um, so. Mr. Yeah, um, you true. know, look, I got a rocket ship that can fly he to wherever. Have one of his, uh, yeah. his Optimus robots uh, responding yeah. to his emails. I'm yeah. surprised an Optimus robot didn't come knock on my door and say, Mr. Musk can't make it. And it goes into its broken cyber cab and makes it down the block. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you know, it's just like we would think with all of this, they would have at least I, I'm OK with no. But it's like we've been asking Donnie and, and Camilla and all of them to show and they didn't make yeah. it. But that's OK. So, well, enough about us. Thank you for watching. There's a special Great live time. show today. There'll be another yeah. live show next Friday, but it will be, uh, I think, at 8.30 Eastern time in the morning. I don't know if we have any guests, 
Um, don't forget to subscribe and like the rebroadcast of the full show will be rebroadcasted on Saturday morning. It comes out at 6 a.m. Eastern time. Um, if you have any questions, please ask or have comments, feel free. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Did I miss anything, boys, or are we good? Who's next there's week? No, there's, there's, no guest, there's no guests next week, so uh, if we can find somebody, let's do it. Otherwise, it'll be us. Oh. Hey, Vladimir, this is it, buddy. You can come this on. Is it. You've got, you've yeah, got a yeah. spot. Musk's right up the street. Literally, his cyber truck factory is like five miles away. I could go meet him there. We could have a show. It'll be great. He could give me a tour. It'll be good for uh -huh. the show. So we ask you, Elon, and you know his AI is watching the internet. So Elon, maybe come you on, can chop, go chop. to his. He's building a compound for his twelve kids or something with two. He has wives. twelve kids. Yeah, you know, there's something um, called um, birth ten control. kids. I think. Yeah. Really, oh wow. Well, he's yeah. just trying to repopulate the Earth. You know. Yeah. But maybe in Mars. It's for his Mars population. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. I think yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, it could be. All right, guys. It's always good to see you. everybody. Have a great weekend. Thank you for listening or watching. Don't yeah. forget, you can catch us here on YouTube at 2OF Entertainment or wherever you get your podcast. Look for Two Old Farts Making Noises. That's T-W-O, spell the rest. And wherever you get your podcast, you can listen to this if you don't want to look at John's beautiful face. And there you go, everybody. We'll talk to you all later. Cheers.